In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Lamy Dialogue 3 fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the pen coming in. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Lamy Dialogue 3 fountain pen. The Dialogue series are pens that are all capless. The one was a ballpoint, the two was a rollerball, and this, the three, the latest in the series, is a fountain pen. Now, this pen works a bit differently than a Pilot Vanishing Point, which is sort of my favorite of the capless pens. So, you know, this is very easy to do one-handed. This you can do one-handed. It's just a little bit more work to it. So that was initially what put me off of buying this pen when it came out. But seeing it in this high gloss white finish kind of changed my mind I think that the design of this is really, you know, minimalistic and sleek. It kind of looks like it belongs with Apple products or, you know, other design type objects. It's very minimalistic, very clean looking. If Apple were to make a fountain pen, this I think is as close as it it gets at least that I've seen very clean minimalistic design. I really like the look of this pen. So let's walk through it. The pen comes in four different finishes. This is the high gloss white lacquer finish. There's a piano black gloss lacquer finish. There is a matte black finish and a palladium finish. Now in Europe the high gloss lacquer finishes are 30 euros more than the matte finishes. Here in the United States, they're all $3.99 retail. Now, the street price is quite a bit lower. I paid $190 for this, although it was gray market, so I'm not expecting any warranty. But even at $190, this is still more expensive than a vanishing point. So this is, this is a pretty premium pen, in my opinion. Okay, let's walk through the design. So there's no finial, it's just white gloss lacquer. This here is like an etching or an engraving. Uh, so we have the Lamy logo here, and you can you know feel it when you run your hand over it. And then we have this oval, which kind of encapsulates this uh, chrome clip. Now if you'll notice on my pen, it doesn't quite line up. You can kind of see on this side, it just misses a little bit, and that does bug me a bit. What I do like about this design is it helps me know where to where to finally return and close the pen because you know in this position to me the pen, the nib is retracted but it's not all the way in and by lining these two up sort of you know that it's fully closed. So this is a useful design element here. Now looking at the clip You'll notice that it's fatter at the end here than it is up here. And it is a spring-loaded clip. And you'll notice when you retract the, or when you extend the nib, the front part of the clip here, or the back part, retracts into the body ever so slightly. I would say the the clip design is probably my least favorite part of this whole pen. It's, it looks good, it's serviceable, you know, it works as a roll stopper even when it's extended. It's, it's a very functional clip, it's not my favorite looks wise. Now at this end we can see the cover for the nib and we can see this black plastic ring here which says Germany right here I don't know yeah you should be able to see that 
The mechanism, it's a twist mechanism, and it's, I think, more complex than the vanishing point one. You sort of have this half ball here, which is chrome, and it disappears, and the nib comes out. Now, the nib is the standard Lamy nib, but this is the nicer 14 karat gold version, but any of your Safari nibs will fit this pen, so you can remove them pretty easily, which is always nice. And I do think that these Lamy gold nibs are very nice to write with. They have a good elasticity to them. It's not, you know, a perfect nail like a lot of other gold nibs are. And again, the design is very minimalistic. You have this gold bit in the middle by the breather hole and the slit for the, the tines. Very nice looking minimalistic design. Now, in terms of taking this pen apart, you twist and the body removes. There's an O-ring here. And then, of course, like all Lummies, it's proprietary cartridge and converter. Uh, this cartridge is the Lummy T10. This pen did come with the Z27 converter, so that is included in this. Now you'll notice there's knurling here, and you twist this part here, and the nib and the feed, this whole assembly comes out. Pretty basic looking design here. I believe these little ugly dots are like tack welds, not a super well finished thing. Uh, you have these cutouts here. It's, it's functional. Now interestingly, Lamy says that you need to clean the front part of the body and they give you this little part here which you screw into the back here and this just allows you to open that front door so that you can run water through this and clean out any ink that might have accumulated in this part of the pen. It's a nice touch. I've never really thought about doing that with my vanishing point, but I don't know. Maybe I, I do need to do that. Um, Because if you notice, you know, there's no way to control the door when you remove the nib from the, the barrel. So I assume there is, you know, and I think maybe we can even see that there is some ink buildup in there. So I do like that they give you that feature or that uh, tool to help you clean the pen. I think that's really nice. Okay, let's put this back together. So let's do some measurements. Now in terms of length, we are about 140 millimeters. With the nib extended, we're looking at 157 centimeters, millimeters rather. Now in terms of width, this pen is 13.6 millimeters. So it's, it's a fat pen. It's a very comfortable pen. I, I really do, you know, I was worried a bit about the weight, but the thickness of the grip offsets that a bit. Now, going to weight, so about 46.5, and the cartridge in there is about half full. That's a heavy pen, but I think because of the thickness of the, the grip section and the fact that it's not, you know, there's no cap to be hanging off here, it's quite a comfortable pen, I have to say. So. Writing sample, this is the Lamy Dialog 3, this is the Extra Fine, and this is Lamy Blue. Try some fast writing.
That's me. Writing, I, I don't really have any issues. You know, these two skips, this was actually me, not the, not the pen. There's really nothing to complain about here. It's a very smooth nib for an extra fine, although it's probably closer to, you know, a, a fine. This is definitely on the, the wider side for a extra fine. Now, in terms of reverse writing, uh, no, can't really, not really able to do that. In terms of flexibility, this is somewhat of a soft nib, but these nibs aren't designed for flexing, um, and that actually doesn't even look that good to me. But when you write with it, you know, you can see that there's quite a bit of spring to it. Uh, for whatever reason, that doesn't translate that much into line variation with this nib. I'm not sure what, why that is exactly. But this is a, a very nice writing nib. I really think that these Lamy gold nibs are a pretty big noticeable upgrade from the standard steel Lamy nibs. You know, you don't always get significant difference in writing experience between you know, the gold version of the same nib, but with the Lamy ones, you really do. So, I am quite like writing with this pen. So what are my pros and cons for the Lamy Dialogue 3 fountain pen? The biggest pro is definitely that retractable nib design. It is very convenient, much more convenient than taking the cap off of a regular fountain pen. So I, I really like the convenience aspect of this pen. I like that you get a nice 14 karat gold nib. It's very nice to write with. I also think the design of this pen is very good looking. It's definitely much better looking, I think, than the Pilot Vanishing Point which I would consider to be the gold standard for retractable nib fountain pens. I like that it's a good thickness. It's very comfortable to hold. I can write with this pen for quite a long time, even though it is on the heavier side, it's not top heavy. Now, in terms of cons, uh, it's more expensive than the Vanishing Point. Retails for just under $400, and that is a lot of money for this pen. You can get them cheaper at gray market dealers, uh, but it's still more expensive than a, a vanishing point. And in my opinion, this mechanism is not as convenient. With the vanishing point, you can just click a button, and it's pretty much one-handed. This you can do one-handed, but it's a little bit more work, it's not sort of that single action click like you get with the vanishing point. So it loses a little bit on the convenience front, but it is still one of the most convenient fountain pens out there, I think. And that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.